John Hawkins. John has been building things on the internet for over two decades. He found WordPress in the summer of 2003 mm -hmm. and has been fully immersed in it ever since. John was the organizer of the first WordCamp conference in Las Vegas in 2009 and has, in been, and has been involved with it almost every year since. He founded and organizes the monthly Las Vegas WordPress meetup, where he's a frequent pre presenter and has traveled the country speaking at WordPress conferences from coast to coast. Take it away, John. Good morning. All right, I will not be offended if anybody gets up and leaves. At any point during this, you're free to go. So um, on the third Wednesday of each month in Vegas, I organize the WordPress Vegas meetup. Um, we are always looking for new presenters. And so I always tell people, if you've got an idea, and we want to hear you, come up and do like a 15 minute presentation. We always get the exact same response. Oh, I'm no expert. I can't go do that. And um, we're not looking for experts. Like the whole idea behind speaking at a WordPress meetup is that thing that you've been working on trying to solve once you solve it, there's still somebody else who's still trying to get that thing solved. So you getting up on stage and talking about it, whether you're an expert or not, uh, is a great thing. You are actually you're going to help somebody, I promise you. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about, uh, I'm just give you a little bit of an introduction to the WP REST API. Um, hello, my name is John, and I am no expert. So, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so got that going for me. Um, this right here is a talk where uh, I'm just going to tell you what we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to talk about what the heck the REST API is. Anybody ever, anybody have no idea what I'm talking about when I say the REST API? Awesome. My sister over there. That's great. Uh, so we're going to talk about the REST APIs, and I'll tell you about, a bit about what it is. I'm going to tell you about how I got into it and the, uh, the problem that I was trying to solve that kind of forced me to learn about the REST API. And for me, when I'm trying to figure something out, it's always a really, like, you need to have kind of like a real world problem to solve. So I'm going to talk about uh, what I would have done previously before using the REST API, how I would have tried to have solved this issue, which I did try to do previous to, to using it, how I would have done it before using the REST API, uh, then how I use the REST API for fun and profits. And I'll, at the end, I'll talk about some tools that I used that, uh, that really uh, were basically the difference between actually making this thing work and not um, within a reasonable amount of time. And then, because I'm not going to be able to teach you an entire presentation, uh, I'm not going to teach you the REST API in 45 minutes. I'll just show you some other places that you can go and check out. So, what is the WordPress REST API? So, I'll just let you read that. Go ahead. So the REST API is basically a way of passing data back and forth uh, into WordPress and then having it kind of spit out data. Um, it enables developers to create and read uh, and update WordPress content from client-side JavaScript, which I don't write JavaScript, by the way, and from external applications, even those written in languages beyond PHP. I'm a PHP developer, uh, so I typically would build everything that I do in PHP. Um, JavaScript is a thing that I keep saying I'm going to learn, that's on my list. One day. One day. So when you're talking about the REST API, there are these things called methods. Um, for me, these are, the, these are the things that you can do with the REST API. The REST API is about um, you can get data, so you can retrieve data from a server. You can post data, so if you wanted to send data to a server, you can put data, which is like changing or updating data on the server. So if you wanted to make changes to the title of a post or to if you've got a, C, uh, a custom post type and you want to do inject some new data, you can do that through a put or you can delete. So I no longer need that item. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to just delete it. So uh, there are some other REST API terms that if you're going to really get into digging in and learning the REST API, 
These are some other terms that you're going to run into, routes and endpoints and requests and responses and schema and controller classes. And I'm going to talk about maybe one or two of those this entire session. And But these are some other ones that you're going to run into. Uh, this is probably a good point of just getting, uh, so when you're going and looking things up, these, these are going to be some terms that you're going to run into. So let's talk about the problem that I was trying to solve. I had a client. Uh, and it always starts like that, right? I have this client who had this crazy idea. Um, so the central website was built in WordPress. Um, but data was going to be being posted in from a third party site. I was going to collect some of that data. I was going to process some of the data, data, then make some decisions based on the data that came in. And then I was going to post data out to a third party location, get some data back, blah, 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 and then display the appropriate information to the client or to the, to the website visitor at the end. And it looked kind of like this. So the yellow block, the yellow box up there was somebody else posting data into us. All those blue boxes in there are WordPress, either storing data, making decision, and then doing something with the data. And then that orange block is us kind of posting out to another spot, blah, blah, blah. If this had been it, if this had been the entire project, I still wouldn't have needed the REST API. This was great. I, was, I had all of this. We had it all built. And then, of course, the client says, oh, by the way, there's this one other little thing. There's always that one other little thing. Um, this process was they were taking leads. Uh, leads were kind of coming in, and then they were trying to qualify those leads. And then they had a call center. And so what the call center was doing is we would send the data, and it would go into the call center queue. And then the call center would do this, where they would then call and get the person on the phone. And as soon as they got that person on the phone, they needed to get real-time data about who the person was that they were going to be talking to, and not only that, who the buyer was. And all of the, the buyer information all had to happen in real time. There wasn't, it wasn't like I could have done it all at the beginning and then just thrown it all at them initially. No, they couldn't. They couldn't know any information about who the buyer was until it was happening in real time. So, so that was fun. Okay. I'm like, that's fantastic. I have no idea how to do what you're asking me to do. Let's figure it out. So, um, so talk about a little bit about how I would normally solve that issue. And so for me, um, call it the imposter syndrome, but um, I've always kind of considered things like the REST API. Like that's for like real developers. I just kind of tinker around with PHP a little bit. And it looks like this when I type. Um, so I would always typically fall back to methods that I'm familiar with. And so I'm going to show you a couple of those options. And the first one is, well, I'm going to build a short code. Short codes are fantastic. They are super powerful, and you can do a lot of stuff. One of the things that they do very, very well is hide chunks of code from your clients and don't let them screw things up when they're in the editor, which is a lot of fun. So if I was going to do something with the, uh, anybody built a short code? Yeah. <laughs> this is a really simple process, right? I'm going to create a short code, and it's going to be called process the data. And once, if, it, if, the, if a page loads and that short, short code is on there, it's going to run the, uh, this particular uh, my short code function. And then in there, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do something really simple where I'm going to check to make sure that uh, I'll make the slides available. So you don't have to do that. You can try to figure out what that MD5 hash is. It actually says, your, your mom. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. I don't know why. You need something, and I'm like, ah, your mom. So, um, so in here, th this is like a really simple way of kind of going about it. So uh, I'm just checking to see if they've sent me the proper secret code. And then if they have, uh, it, did they send me for an ask, or are they sending me an update? Because there's kind of two different processes that they needed to do. And based on that, I'm going to just run one of two functions. Piece of cake, no problem. You throw it up onto, you create a WordPress page. You throw your data in there, and it just, it's anytime somebody goes to the process-data page, it's going to run my script and try to then do something with it. Great. There's challenges. 
The first one is a little bit of a silly challenge, um, but it's for me, it's uh, those nagging things that kind of bother me about ways that we kind of solve things. And it's as simple as this. That process data is now a page that exists on this person's website. So if they don't know any better, that page can get uh, indexed. And now that can just be a page that gets people are like, oh, I'm going to click on that as a search result. They're going to get nothing, or they're going to get like some weird error. So obviously, there's ways around it. But it's just it's one more thing. And not only that, now you've got, if a client's in there and they go, what does process data do? Delete. Well, process data doesn't do anything now. Thanks, pal. Um, but yeah, so it's just kind of a silly one. The bigger problem with, the, uh, with it was the, it's, you know, a, a short code is mainly used for, yeah, I can process data behind the scenes, but the idea is that it's going to then display some sort of a response on the screen. Um, which obviously for my call center, that wasn't really going to be helpful because they, they didn't need to see it. They needed to do, get that data and bring that data back into their system so that they could actually do something with it. So, so as easy as that would have been, short codes were kind of out of the question. So option two. I am sure that there's actually a technical term for what I'm about to show you, but I've always just called it the listener. So what is the listener? The listener is basically, it looks a lot like the code from the short code. The only difference is I've kind of created this as an action that is hooked to the init uh, function inside of WordPress, which super simple. Anytime WordPress goes to load, it hits that init area, and it says, great. As soon as init happens, I'm going to go and process this data. The problems with this are... This is going to, the init runs on every page load, whether it's front end or back end. Um, obviously, I could have probably found a, a different um, hook to connect it to. It didn't have to be on init. It could be on something different. But still, you kind of run into that same basic problem, which is it's going to run all the time on a certain set of pages. And since I'm looking for posted data, that means if somebody is going to uh, fill out a contact form or fill out any sort of form on your website, this process was going to then run and try to process data. And not that it's the end of the world, but, you know, it's just one more thing and it's not clean and there, there should be a different way. There was. And we'll talk about that. And also, by the way, that the biggest problem with this one would have been that uh, with this one or the short code really is I would have needed to build my own um, oh my notes are like on the next screen so the challenges uh, the the um, the biggest problem was I would have needed to design and build a way of packaging up that data and then delivering it back to the uh, back to the call center and um, that's a pain. It's a pain that uh, it was, it was going to be a lot of extra code that I would have had to have written and maintained. And if they ever changed anything, I would be the one who had to kind of go and, and do that. So um, both of my kind of previous here's how I would do it were kind of out the window. And so that's when I'm like, all right, let's just go take a look at the REST API. So the REST API to the rescue. So like anything new, um, when I first started messing with the REST API, I was overwhelmed. I'm like, this just seems like it's so it's so big, there's so many different things you can do with it. Again, this is for real developers. But um, so let's, we're going to kind of take this, we're going to strip it down, and we're going to talk about the absolute basics of getting into this because um, all of the challenges that I had were kind of already taken care of for us in with the REST API. So the way that it works is you're going to create a route. And a route is basically like you're going to tell people uh, this is, this is where you're going to go. This was actually another one of the big things was because I didn't want to have to, people going to process-data. So th these routes, they exist um, in WordPress, and I'll show you a couple of examples. These, these exist on your WordPress website right now, and you may not even know that. Um, so if you use pretty links, um, just pretty permalinks, you can go to slash wp-json. You can do this on your own website right now, and you are going to get a big JSON package of data. And you can do a ton of stuff with that data or nothing. It just exists. It's there. Um, but somebody could, uh, the idea behind that, if you think about like, um, like a desktop tool, 
you wouldn't necessarily like a desktop tool if you wanted to build like a, a, a like a Mac native app, let's say, you could have that and reach out to these API points and all of that data, WordPress is already just kind of serving you that data. You can kind of grab it and, uh, and then display it and do whatever the heck you want with it. So um, this is what it looks like if you've got pretty permalinks and this is what it looks like if you don't use pretty permalinks. Um, the obvious answer here is use pretty permalinks because it's, it's just such a clean process for, for, for doing that. So. Um, WordPress has a number of built-in endpoints, and I'm not gonna. There's a there's a long list of them, but I mean, you can get like posts and pages and authors and pretty much everything. If it if it exists inside of kind of like core WordPress, there is a, a JSON endpoint for it. So like this one up here, WP slash V2 slash posts. This is going to give you. Uh, I'm not sure if it gives you all of the posts or if it only gives you the the first ten, like a. Uh, like a per page thing, but it's going to give you a bunch of posts, and so it doesn't really matter. Does it give them all? No, by default it gives the, the number. The of per page? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you would, you'd by default, you would see the, the latest 10 blog posts. Um, one of the other things that you can do with these endpoints, which is kind of fun, and uh, I'm going to talk about it about this much, is you can see like I've added slash one, two, three onto the end of that uh, API onto the end of that endpoint. And what this will do is this will actually just give you the information for that particular post, post ID number 123. So again, if you think about that idea of building like a Mac native desktop app and you said, first I want to display a list of all recent posts, you would go to that other API point. Or if you go, oh, they've clicked on a link, now I just need to grab all of the data for that one particular post, you can do that too. And that's all built in. When you're building your own API endpoints, you can do this exact same thing. And I have a slide that'll show you the code in a, it's a couple of slides ahead. But this, uh, this actually ends up using some like regular expression stuff. And if you thought, or if, if me, imposter syndrome here, uh, thought that uh, the idea of using the REST API was above me, regex is, that's in a different, hmm. Not even, not even close. Do we have any questions at this point? Let me just stop. I'll take another drink and do we have any good questions? Good jokes. All right, good. I like it. So what is this going to look like? Ah, okay. So this is me creating a, a, a route. This is a very simple route. Um, when you're doing this route, uh, the way that this works is I'm, I'm registering a new route, and all I'm doing is I'm basically telling WordPress, you should start to expect new things to happen at this URL. So register rest route, this is going to be that slash WP dash JSON slash client name slash V1. You can put whatever you want there. It doesn't really matter. You can put anything you want. And then uh, slash data handler. And it's at the end of that where that data handler is. And I think it's actually, it's uh, on, it's that slide. So you can see that little question mark P slash D. That's the regex stuff that is actually pulling that one little piece of data. So, all right. So this is uh, basically tells WordPress we're going to create a new route. It includes a namespace. That's that first part there. That's called the namespace. For, um, then the second part is actually the route. So if I wanted to, I could use different, uh, where that is, I, can, I could create different elements inside of there for, uh, for what types of things that I wanted uh, that, that API to do. So for me, I was really trying to keep this very, very simple. So. Um, all of my stuff is actually just just lives. I don't care whether they're going to be, whether they're sending me the, the data for the first time or if they're later sending me one of those update quests or like some of them they do an, an ask and some of them they do an update. If they do an ask, I need, to, I need to go do all of my big lookups and then send them back a bunch of data. But later on, after they've actually talked to that person, they will do a, an update. So they'll say, hey, we talked to that person and um, it's a go. Or they talked to that person and, or the, I, I didn't talk to that person, I, I tried to, and I need to call them back at 7 p.m. And so they might send me one of those. So I could have created separate endpoints for each one of those and just assumed, hey, anytime anybody hits this endpoint, 
I know that this is what they're trying to do. But for me, I was trying to make it easy uh, in two ways. One, I was trying to make it easy for me to um, keep all of this in just one little bucket. And two, I was really trying to make it easy on the person on the other end where I just said, when you send me all of the data, you can just send me a, a, a modifier in there, like a, a status or a mode, and I'll show that to you in just a second. But um, so in here, uh, based on this setup, our URL would end up looking like this down here. So WP slash JSON, client name, V1, data handler. So now WordPress knows that that thing exists and is going to just sit there and wait for data to be coming in only on this URL. If they were to post to the main page of WordPress, WordPress is like, I don't know what you're trying to do. I don't care. And it's going to just ignore it, which means no extra processing behind the scenes. So uh, somebody fills out a gravity form, whatever. None of that matters. My code is in a separate space. And it is really unlikely that the client is going to go break this because they, first off, the client has no idea this even exists. They just know that it works behind the scenes. They're like, hey, great. So that's, that's why this is another really great way of, of kind of going about that. Uh, all right, so I'll tell you, uh, oh, yeah, the, the regex. This was a whole slide all about uh, regex. So if I wanted to, I could say data handler 456. So they were going to send me an update about post 456. This was overkill for my project. Um, it might not be for yours. Or actually, this is probably a really, this is one of those things where if I were to probably test it, I'd go, shit, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. I should have done it that way. So uh, what this happens, the, the last thing you're going to see right here is the callback. Um, so what happens is when data gets posted to there, if they send, a, if if you were to try to go to this, this URL, which obviously don't because I don't own yoursite.com, which would be really a cool domain name to own. Um, but if you were to put that into your address bar, in the address bar, that is a get request as compared to a post request. So even if you were to try to do this on the actual website, you would just get, hey, no, uh, we're, I think the, the response is something like, no route is set up or no endpoint is set up. So WordPress is going to basically say, I was expecting a post of data. You tried to send me a get request, go away. I don't care what you're trying to do. Just I'm not going to do anything. But again, this is great because there's no real processing power. It got to just right there and said, I don't know what you're talking about. Moved on. So here's our URL. What it's going to do, though, is if you do pass that data in and it goes to that right URL, then you, it'll hit my callback function. So now my callback function is really pretty simple. Grab some data, and it takes this data, and um, it's going to do that request. WordPress has a lot of built-in functions that make kind of dealing with the data that come in super simple. So this uh, get JSON params, I'm taking and I'm turning that into, I'm putting all of that into this little one variable called data. And all of that data just comes in as a nice little array. And now I can really do whatever the heck I want with it. Um, so you see I've kind of created a, uh, yeah, so this is really just the shell of the function. And some super handy functions, da 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 It'll take it, yeah, I already said all of that. Great. OK, so let's kind of build a little bit further. So after I've got my data, the next thing that I'm going to do is um, which allowed keys, I'm going to check to see that they are sending me their proper key. Because I don't, if it's not my call center sending data to this, let's just say randomly somebody figured out how to find my JSON route, and, or by uh, my REST API route, I wouldn't want them, just anybody, being able to send me updated updates for any of my posts. I don't want them to be able to change the status of a client's uh, call records. That would be bad. So because I only have one call center ever sending this in, um, I just hard-coded it. So I basically said, here's an allowed key. Did the data match it? It did. Great, I'm going to keep processing. It didn't? Good, go away. Um, if, if this particular <laughs> client were to have a whole bunch of different uh, call centers or folks that were potentially um, going to pass in data, I would probably create a user for each one of those folks and then attach this as metadata and then do like a lookup on as the data was being processed. But again, 
trying to keep it simple, trying to not make it overkill for what was needed on this project. I just kept it super simple. And then I basically I'm going to just strip out, I'm going to grab some data and you can see I'm kind of escaping all of the data. I want to make sure that they're not going to send me anything that is going to be harmful. And I just kind of extract some variables and made them very easy to, to so that when I'm doing stuff later on in the code, they're easy. So this is their key, this is their ID, this is that mode that I was talking about, whether it's going to be an ask or whether it's going to be an update. And then um, if it is um, when um, one of the modes has a lead status, which is just a number one to eight or nine, like different statuses for what that is. So I'm going to just kind of create those as variables, and then I can use them a little bit further uh, down in the process. And then down below that, I'm going to just start doing some checks. So I think the first one is, yeah, so is the key, is the key that they sent me, does it match that allowed key? Um, this is fun. This, uh, remember I was talking about how WordPress has some built-in functions, and one of the best ones is this rest ensure response. This is the absolute lifesaver. If I wasn't, if back when we were talking about the other way, like that building a listener, and I said that I would have to figure out a way of packaging up that data and then sending it back to the call center, and I would have to formulate what that stuff looked like, yeah, I don't have to do that now. All I have to do is say, I'm going to return this particular function, and then I just make an array. And so the array can literally be anything that I want. So um, I've, I've got a document that I told the call center, you can expect to get back a couple of different things. You can get a code. That code is going to be whether or not it's a, like, I'm going to tell them what the error is. It was an invalid key. Um, so if it was, if this, if their key was wrong, I'm going to tell the, them, hey, you sent me the wrong key, um, and I, I can send them a message, and I can do a status. Uh, so I, like all of my st error statuses are 100. Other statuses are like 200, 300, and 400, et cetera. So yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if this is like a sample code that you put together, or it's from your site you're using this code? This is, uh, I mean, the API key is different. What? I did change some stuff, so it's not 100%, but. Is the key is not equal as one x3 plus Yes, that is, it is not actually a syntax error. So it has to be exact. Uh, so not equal, they, um, so it's not equal and then not exact is what this is. So yeah, good, yeah. Uh, not actually wrong, sweet. By the way, finding a syntax error in my code, not a stretch. Like, I'm like, where is it? And we're this far in, and you only found one, so, and I thought we are doing pretty good. Whew. Being nice? Cool. You guys are all right. Um, that's funny. I was thinking, did I run this code? Yeah. Yeah. So then there's a couple of other checks. Oh, that was so good. Um, I do a couple of other checks to make sure um, I created a, an array of the different modes that I was kind of going to be expecting, and then I just check to see if it's one of those modes. Great, no big deal. Um, and then the post data, um, oh yeah, do we have, uh, I, I do a lookup at this point uh, to see if, if the ID is in, in the database. Oh yeah, it is? Okay, great, you can go through. If not, psh, go away. Um, so I'm just, I'm doing all of these checks before I do any of the actual processing. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm going to kick them out any point that doesn't make it. Like any, anything that could be potentially wrong, I'm just kind of doing at the top of it. And then down at the bottom is kind of where the, where the magic happens. Um, so when, uh, I'm going to read this because I wrote a lot, of, a lot of text. So when the call center gets the lead on the phone, they ping the rest of the API with a mode of ask. So first we do the global status just in case the step fails. If not, I do this, blah, blah, blah. I already said all of that. That was, like a, that was a whole slide ago. Let's see. What do we do here? Okay, so they're doing an ask. So the mode comes in as an ask. And I said, great, I'm going to immediately, I'm going to do a, an update status. Uh, I'm going to do an update post meta. I'm going to create a global status basically saying, now, I will tell you, 
um, I'm returning all of this stuff in real time. And when I say it's real time, uh, I think they're getting it back in like a quarter of a second. It's ridiculous how fast it is. So the idea of doing this update post meta at the very, very top is kind of silly because that exists for about a quarter of a second. It's in there, and then I'm going to do another one a, a second later. But I actually do this on purpose because if for whatever reason, when I post out to the other folks and I'm, I'm supposed to be getting data back, if for whatever reason something breaks, I'll know about it because the global status should this, this um, yeah, pending. If somebody were to like load up the list of all of the different leads and they see something that is marked as pending, well, there's a problem. Something broke somewhere along the way. Um, any future version of this, my idea was that I would uh, create a little button like on the dashboard. So when they're looking at their list of all of their leads, if they see any that say pending, there would be another button like right next to it that's like, okay, just reprocess. Because I would have already had all that data. I would already have everything that they had sent in kind of stored and ready to go. But for whatever reason, the internet was just broken for 30 seconds. And um, probably because of my typo on that previous page, um, they would see that it was pending, and I'd be able to click it and then reprocess the data. I never got to that point. By the way, none of this actually launched. The client stopped. Like I built all of this, and then it didn't. Welcome to client work. He built all this fun stuff. Oh, I got paid. <laughs> oh, I got paid. Yeah, that happens first. Um, so. Once I did that, then I'm doing a find a buyer. The find buyer is actually the piece that is going out and, and calling the third party system that returns all the buyer information to me. And for when they do that, I'm basically getting back a I'm basically getting back an array. So if I don't see an array, then I basically know that um, there was no buyer and I return that back to the client or to the call center. And then they get that awkward thing of, hey, I know that you were trying to do that. We don't have a buyer, so I've got nobody for you to talk to by click. So Oops. Um, and then you can see I'm doing that update post meta again, whether it was a sold lead or whether it was a, a no buyer. So real simple stuff. OK. Oh, yeah. So this was, I'm not going to really get into what the, the folks were sending me back, but this is basically what it looks like. So when they send it back, because I don't want to have to be the one who's kind of processing all of that data and turning it into something fancy. All I'm doing is turning it into an array. So here's the buyer data as an array, which is the status is going to be success. And then I'm looking up in our database because I store all of that data again. Buyer data is their name, their phone, email, the URL. And then I'm just returning that back with that nice little function that uh, rest return response. And I just send them all of that, the, the information. Super simple. Yeah. And then this is what I send back to the call center. Thank you. Um, yeah, so on their side, this is now just a small little chunk of JSON data that they can get, and then they can process the same like I was processing it on the other side, they know that they're getting ready to call Tyler Durden. Oh, there's a lot of talking. All right, questions so far? You guys all are ready to go do this? Yes. Uh, you want me to go back to the beginning? So what I do, Typically, so the question was, I've written all this code. Where does it live? Does it live inside of like functions.php? For me, what I typically do, um, anytime I'm building something like this for the client, I don't want to tie it to their theme. So I'm not going to put it in the theme because the whole idea is this should really kind of be agnostic to, to the theme. And it is. This has nothing to do with the theme. So what I'll do is I'll actually create a uh, very simple plugin. I almost, for all my clients, I typically will create something called a um, core functionality plugin. And so then I have a spot that uh, is just a functions file, or in this case, it's a series of files that is part of a plugin. And so they can kind of go activate it or deactivate it. Hopefully, they don't deactivate it. That would be bad. Thank you. MU plugins. I could do that. I don't, because then I can never remember it's there. <laughs> And forget about it. How does this even work? I don't even know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just have a quick question. Uh, what's your text editor? It's really nice. Oh, question.
question is, what is my text editor? That is uh, Sublime. Uh, no, that's VS Code. It does not look like Sublime. Yeah, this is VS Code. Yeah, it's VS Code, and I have an absolute crap ton of extensions. And I would tell you that I'm really smart and figured out all these extensions to use. That is not the case. Yes. The, it's super handy also, and you can immediately go, oh, that's where it's indented wrong. Yeah, it's, a, it's an extension for VS Code. Uh, if, if you want, you can email me, and I will. Um, a buddy of mine has like a whole list of extensions, and that's what I did. I just. VS Code, Mac, and Windows? Everything, right? Mac, Windows, Linux, yeah. Uh, I could try. Yeah, I'll, I'll put these online. I'll, uh, yes. Uh, yes, maybe. Uh, VS Code is free. I love that. Yeah, yeah. VS Code is awesome. And I actually just switched to it. I've been a Sublime user for years and years and years. And... Um, at my previous company, they were all switching to VS Code. And, um, oh, so good. It's really, it's really good. It's got Git built right in. It's, oh, it's fantastic. All right, so let's talk tools. When you are dealing with JSON data, whether you're the one creating it or whether the one you're consuming it, um, there is, it, it looks like a big blob of text. Like, this is a, this is, Oh, by the way, I think this is if you go to slash WP JSON, like this is, that's what you're going to get. And like it is a, just a crap ton of just useless data. Um, there is a Chrome extension called JSON Formatter that just automatically has a little toggle over there and you can s switch back and forth into this pretty view and actually see what you're getting. We have five minutes, so if you have questions, get ready to ask them quickly. Um, so, yeah, just super simple. Uh, oh, do they? Oh, automatically? Oh, nice. Chrome does not. Chrome just was like, here you go. <laughs> just, ugh. Uh, this plugin, Postman, um, anybody ever heard of Postman? Yeah, this thing is fantastic. This is honestly the difference between me building this project and not building this project. Um, I'm going to just show you what this thing does, testing your API. Okay, so this is the, the screen, and uh, let me see here. So up at the very top, I'm writing the URL that I want this to be tested at. So you can see that I've got it going to my example.local, and then the endpoint that we've been talking about this entire time. And then in the body, I've created just a little bit of a JSON package, which is the key, the mode, and the ID. So this is the, the client's key, or I mean the call center's key, what mode they want to, I want to test them doing an ask, and then an ID, and then you hit the blue button up there that says send, it sends it, and it shoots you back this little package of data, or it sends you back an error message, which it sends you back a lot of error messages before you actually get it to send you back actual data. A lot of error messages. Yes. But being able to just hit that send button, make one change in your code, hit the send button, make one change in your code, hit the send, what, like it is a repeating thing for like four days. Oh shit, like there's data. It's the best, it is the absolute best. So um, Postman, they have, it's free. They do have um, some paid tiers. Um, I liked it so much, I wanted to just go and purchase it, but none of their paid stuff like applied to me at all because it's kind of like team-related stuff or uh, none of it applied. So i got to give them money some other way, I guess. Um, and here's the learn more, which is I'm going to just give you one URL other than Google and, uh, and some searching. developer.wordpress.org slash rest-api. Everything under the sun is right there. Like you can go, it'll it'll give you any of that. Any questions? Yeah. Well, it's not a uh, question. I just want to mention how uh, how useful is the REST API, especially if you are an you are an agency that work with different uh, clients, with different hosting companies, with different WordPress versions, different plugins. Once we create a, a REST API that help us to give us the version of the WordPress, version of uh, plugins, because sometimes you cannot even access to the 
through, through SSH to run some commands in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, CLI. So it gave us uh, all the information that we needed, and then we use it in our own custom dashboard. Mm -hmm. So you can yeah. have your all the information of all your clients, because all the clients have different needs, have different servers, different anything. Yeah. So it was very useful to have in one dashboard all the clients. That's awesome. Dashboard. I'd love to see a screenshot of that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's as soon as you find the the need or the data that you can you have access to to get from all these different locations, um, then it's really just a matter of like. Once you've got all this data, what am I going to do with it? Like building a building a, your own internal dashboard is awesome. I love that idea for sure. Robert, did you have a question or a statement? Or over here? Go ahead. Um, now that you've done this, like, have you found other use cases, or have you started like redoing anything? Like, has this created like a whole new uh, avenue for you? Or um, so I have a I have a regular day job. Um, where I also build WordPress stuff all day, which is fun. So I haven't had anything where I'm just like, oh, I'm going to go back and do that thing. But I do now at least consider it an option, something in my tool bag where I'm like, all right, well, I could at least run the idea where before it was, it, it did. It just felt like it was, oh, that's something that other people do. I, I, don't, I don't do that. Somebody else does that. But um, yeah, like, like she was saying, the idea of, creating a, a dashboard for, of pulling in your data from a whole bunch of different locations. Robert, I think you're going to ask me your, one more question. One more question. Yeah. You got a minute. Okay. Just really more a statement than a question. If you're doing any Gutenberg work uh, with custom host types, you have to have show in rest set to true. Mm -hmm. So it kind of ties in with the... That's true. Um, took me half an hour to find that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here all day. So if you have any other questions, hit me up. Otherwise, you can find me at john at vegasgeek.com. Thank you. <laughs>